It is May long weekend here in Manitoba, which means that gardening and beekeeping are in full swing. So I thought I would take you along with some of the jobs that I have to do for this weekend. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean out this hive. As you can see, this is my live hive and they are doing quite well. The hive over there is dead, so I have to clean that one out as well. I'm not gonna bring you along for that because that's not entertaining to watch. Um, and then I thought I would bring you to the greenhouse to show you what's growing in there, how all the plants are doing. And then the last thing I have to do today is get the garden prepped for actually planting. So long story short, if you've been watching, I have a very bad quack grass issue in my garden. So today I'm gonna whipper snip everything down, add a thick layer of mulch or straw, and, um, and then put up my trellises. So for those of you that aren't familiar with beekeeping, bees are quite tidy. Um, if you can see the front of the hive there, there's a bunch of debris. That is from the bees cleaning out their hive. And then at the very bottom in the front of the hive here, there's some of the wax paper from the um, uh, pollen patties that I put in a couple weeks ago. So they eat the pollen inside the po pollen patties and then they actually take little nibbles of the paper that the pollen patty is on and then they take it out of the hive to dispose of it because it's not very tidy for their, um, for their beehive. So there's still some sugar water in here, which tells me that there's probably quite a bit of nectar around, so they're not actually eating as much of the sugar water um, as they would be in like the um, in the late winter, early spring. So smoking the hive doesn't hurt any of the bees. It just kind of calms them and it masks their pheromones that are like their alarm call pheromones. This is what the bottom of the hive looks like and to clean it out all I do is I take my hive tool and I just scrape like this just to get rid of all the dead bees. Now I'm just gonna look to see if I can find the queen and or some eggs. This frame, as you can see, is pretty empty. So is this next one, but this one here looks pretty promising.
There's definitely larva on this frame. Not seeing any eggs yet though. means that the queen's been laying in the last three days at least. And here's a closer look at one of the frames. If you look closely, you should be able to see some eggs, which look like little grains of rice, and some larvae, which look like U-shaped worms. Well, I didn't find the queen today, but I saw lots of eggs and a good laying pattern, so I think she's doing pretty well. Maybe I'll find her next time I'm in here. So I'm just pushing all the frames back the way they were. And I'm going to add the frame that I took out. And then I'm going to close this up. So it's a little bit of a disaster in here, but it's a greenhouse. It's supposed to be messy, right? That's why I built one and stopped doing this all inside my house. Um, so yeah, I thought I would just show you what I have going on. So starting over here, I have a bunch of, I guess it's a mishmash of things right now. So I have a bunch of squash and melons. So for example, I have some yellow zucchini, some gallo de cine, which you can see there. I have some Leilanu Sweet Glow. I have some artichokes here, which are starting to yellow. I think that they don't, I mean, to be fair, they're sitting in water. I watered everything last night because it has been getting really, really warm in here and everything's been drying out really quickly. So I've been having to water every day. Um, I have a tomato here, um, indigo rose. These ones are a Blinken. I don't want these to fall over. This one's a Black Beauty. Overall, the tomatoes are looking pretty good. The melons are clearly thriving in here. This one's a green zucchini. And then these ones are, these ones look like melons of some sort. Um, honeydew. I planted some brassicas, which you can see in the back. I've been debating putting these out because the flea beetles are really bad right now. So I haven't done that yet. Um, and I don't know if I will. So then I have some other stuff. This is a mongogo. It's a type of squash. A haramaju. I've been trying to grow these for a couple years. Um, haven't had much luck because things get to them before I'm able to actually enjoy them. This is a birdhouse gourd. Another Leilanu sweet glow. Kakuzi. And then I have some tomatoes. I think these are black beauties. I'm just letting these, oh no, sorry, these are um, uh, sweetie cherry tomatoes, which I like them, don't love them. So I'm just kind of like letting them grow there. If they look good, I'll plant them in the garden, but I'm not going to go the extra mile to get them and pot them up. These tomatoes and peppers, I don't know what's up. I don't know if it's because I put them out in the greenhouse too early. It was always warm when I, in the greenhouse, or temperature-wise, but they all started yellowing on the tips. And so I thought it was because they were in their two-inch cells still. So I potted them up. I mean, there is a bunch of um, algae growing on the top, so maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not sure. But anyways, they haven't really improved. This has been potted up for probably two weeks now, maybe three. So, 
Yeah, I don't know if this is going to get any better. This is a beefsteak tomato. And then the same thing with these peppers. I think maybe I put them out. They didn't like the cold, so they got a little bit stunted. Um, they haven't done much since they've been transplanted in here, so we'll see what happens. But this is a sugar rush peach. And then another sugar rush peach. So as you can see, like, the leaves are curling, the leaves are browning or yellowing. They just don't look super healthy. So we'll see what they actually end up looking like in the next couple weeks before I uh, pop them out. Here I have a bunch of loofahs. I have already, I guess these are just extra soil. I've already um, potted up two. Yeah, I have two growing in bigger pots that will be grown in here. And then these ones, as you can see, they're still quite small. I planted these at least a month and a half ago. Probably even longer, to be honest. So I don't know how well these are going to do. They do need quite a long time to grow. And the ones that are um, potted up are already significantly larger than these ones. So this might be a lost cause at this point. And then these are my peppers doing the same thing as the sugar rush peach. They're kind of curling. They're stunted. Um, they don't look great. I don't know if it's because they don't like being in their soil blocks. Their roots are clearly growing out of the soil block. The soil block is a little bit more compact than peppers like. So maybe that's what's going on, but they do not look great as you can see. And they are quite stunted. They haven't grown really much at all since I put them out here about a few weeks ago. So we will see. I have been keeping up with my fertil fertilizing and making sure that they don't dry out too much, but also trying not to keep them super wet. Like right now they are wet because I watered them last night but I'll let them kind of dry out a little bit, but not too much. But um, we'll see what they look like in the next couple weeks. And I have some, another Haramaju here and another one. These are cantaloupe, another Gala de Cine and a weed growing. And then another batch of peppers, which like I said, doing the same thing and some more brassicas. It's interesting, I do have flea beetles in the greenhouse right now. They are attacking my bok choy. Um, they're all over, all over my bok choy, but they haven't, maybe they just haven't found these yet, but there's no damage on any of these brassicas back here, which is always nice to see, but I know that as soon as I put them outside, the flea beetles are going to just demolish them. Then over here I have some more tomatoes. Unfortunately, none of my berries, crazy cherry or my sun golds have germinated, which is really disappointing. Um, and I've been trying to find either variety at the store and I have not been able to, which really sucks because those are two of my favorites and my definitely my husband's favorite um, tomatoes. But you know, that's just the, uh, the name of gardening sometimes. So I did buy some other varieties. <laughs> This one, I was just a San Marzano, this one, but you can see how hot my greenhouse has been getting this. I left in here for one day. I bought it, left it for one day without being watered, and it completely got crispy. So the top leaves still look pretty intact, so I think it'll bounce back, but yeah, this greenhouse gets extremely warm. I have been keeping the door open and the window open just to get a lot of airflow, and it seems to be working okay. Both doors and windows are open right now and it's still really hot, but I think it's a little bit more manageable. And then in this tray behind, um, I have a bunch of Cosmos. <laughs> There's a bunch of ranunculus corms in here too that just didn't end up germinating. So I could just throw those away. But the um, Cosmos are just starting to come up here. There's one there. Um, I haven't had great germination with these. These are all from Cosmos. Um, I saved these seeds last year but I just haven't been keeping up with watering this very well, I think, so that's why nothing has really germinated, but this there is a good sign for sure. And on this side, I have two different types of corn, and then um, I just soak them overnight, and then I put them in here, and they're starting to germinate as well. So corn should be up shortly, and then I have just a couple things down here this is a birdhouse gourd that's just starting to come up. So I'll put that up 
top here so it has some sunlight. And then I have a bunch of onions that I need to get out. That's definitely a job for this weekend. And then, like I said, I have peppers here. This one actually looks like it started to bounce back. Like those two, three top leaves are new. Um, so it's definitely bouncing back. So maybe they just needed to be potted up. This one also, these couple leaves look new. And then I have another, um, that's a jalapeno. Then I have two loofahs, which have grown like doubled in size since I potted them up. Some spinach, which I mean, I don't have high hopes for. Spinach does not like heat and it is very hot in here. So I don't know how well the spinach is gonna do. Artichokes are looking amazing. I'm actually very happy with the way these look, but it looks like something has been munching on these, but doesn't look like they've caused too much damage, which is okay. The arugula definitely has some flea beetle damage, which if you've never seen flea beetle damage, they're just tiny little holes that are in the leaves. Flea beetles love young, tender brassicas especially, but they will eat other like young plants, especially lettuce. And then I do have some bok choy back here, but like I said, the flea beetles, I mean, at this point I might as well not even cover it. <laughs> the flea beetle damage on those is quite significant. So don't know if I'll get any bok choy, but I might, because I have the greenhouse now, I think I'm gonna try to plant some stuff for fall. And then the flea beetles won't be around then, which would be great. Then I bought these from the one a plant store yesterday. So I bought a sugar, sun sugar cherry tomato, which I'm hoping these are like sun golds. Then I got a sunrise bumblebee tomato. This one looked really cool. I don't know if you can see. That one looks very pretty. Then I have a sweet pepper. I think this is just like a bell pepper. My husband picked this one up. Oh, it's long. Oh, those look really cool. So they're a long sweet pepper. I think the flowers are coming off because it was so hot in here. And then this one is a lemon spice jalapeno which I do have some of these started, but like I said, they're stunted. So I wanted to buy another one. It was actually the only one left and it, it does not look great. So we'll see how well this one does. And then last but not least, I got a little orange habanero, which I don't have. I did plant some habanadas, but not any habaneros. Okay, so that was the update of the greenhouse. Things are looking okay. Um, not as good as I would like, especially when it comes to my tomatoes and my peppers, but my squash all look really amazing and I love growing squash and melons. They're one of my favorite things to grow, but I love having a huge assortment of tomatoes and peppers. So I'm hoping that, um, the garden pulls through once everything's planted in the ground, but only time will tell. Um, so the next thing I need to do is get the garden whippersnipped and start adding the mulch layers to my garden bed so that I can hopefully plant next week. There's no frost in the forecast for the next week or the next 10 days, but we are going down to like eight degrees um, or six degrees one of those days. And at my place, that usually means that there could be a frost and just to uh, per, like avoid having to bring sheets outside and cover everything in buckets, I'm just going to wait until at least Wednesday, I think. And it's nice because Wednesday it's supposed to rain, so I'm gonna plant everything out and then hopefully it'll rain and then water everything in really well. That's what I'm hoping for anyways. So let's get to the garden. So as you can probably see behind me, the garden isn't in the best state that it's ever been. Um, the quack grass is coming back with vengeance, but I mean, as per usual, I guess. Um, so my plan is to whippersnip everything. So cut the grass down as short as I can and then I have a bunch of hay bales and I'm just gonna add some more mulch on top of the quack grass and plant into it. That's what I did last year. I mean, it didn't stop the quack grass from coming in at all, but 
I don't want to till because the soil was the healthiest it's ever been last year. And last year was my second summer with a no-till garden. So because I'm trying to avoid tilling, I think that this is my only option is just to mow it down and then I'll like broad fork it or like aerate it a little bit but not till it and then put some mulch down. And then the grass will get long like this throughout the summer but as long as the plants can get a little bit taller than the grass, I find that it tends to be okay. So before I do that though, I'll do a quick tour of the two garden beds that I have growing in here right now. This is my potato patch here and as you can see the no-till method does work quite well in this spot. I'm not sure why, maybe because the mulch is a little bit thicker, but you can see that it's just growing into like there and there. There's a couple blades of grass growing out through like kind of spotted throughout but not as bad as the main garden. And I think that's maybe just because it is so thick, but I also tilled this garden and then put mulch down. So maybe that's the trick too, is till it and then put the mulch down right away. But um, but yeah, the potatoes are in. I planted them, I think two weeks ago. Um, I don't think any of them have started to sprout. They were already chitting, if that's what you call it, when they start to, to sprout. And then I did cover them really well. So it doesn't look like anything's grown through yet. But something did come into the garden and try and dug out some of them. So hopefully there's still some in this patch. Then this is my garlic bed. So there's a bunch of garlic that popped up um, in the spring. And I planted some carrots along the side here, which you can see there's some German, um, some sprouts there. I haven't watered this bed though, so I should probably do that. And then I did plant some red onions too, which you can see there. Those ones are just starting to sprout as well. So overall this bed looks really good. There's some brassicas coming up too from last year, I guess. That's self-seeded, volunteers. And then a little volunteer lettuce plant as well, which I'm not mad about because love both. I'm just hoping that the flea beetles don't find them. Don't need any dandelions growing in here. Well, this one's pretty intertwined with my asparagus, so it can stay for now, I guess. Um, but yeah, my asparagus is looking really good. It's super tall, as you can see, and there's quite a bit of it in this bed. Um, strawberries are starting to bloom, so we should have strawberries in a few weeks, which I am very excited for. And then there's a bunch of chamomile, it looks like, growing in the corners, just self-seeded. I think this is cilantro. So these ones I planted, um, a few weeks ago as well and yeah there's just a couple growing throughout it looks like i did plant a bunch of basil in this bed as well i don't see any of the basil that has germinated and i'm assuming it's because we've had some i'm just gonna go on to this side i'm assuming it's because we had some pretty um chilly nights and basil really does not like being cold so i might have to come back out here and um sow some more seeds um it's gonna rain this week so I'll add some of those seeds right before the rain comes. But yeah, look at all this, <laughs> this chamomile. You really only have to plant it once, hey? So just to show you what I've done, I've taken a grass trimmer and I've trimmed all the grass as short as I could get it. And then I added a heavy layer of mulch straw on top of the bed. And then when I'm ready for planting, I'll just dig a hole and put my plants in. I'll probably put some compost in those as well, like in the hole and also some fertilizer so the plants have a good start. But I'm gonna plant them right into the ground even though there's quack grass there. <laughs> and then I'll just kind of dig for anything that I'm um, direct sowing, I'll kind of clear space, add some compost um, to the cleared space and then plant the seeds and kind of push away the straw so that the plants will get enough sunlight to germinate and grow. Um, yeah, so like I said, this one actually kill the quack grass, but it'll do all the good things that mulch does. So it'll keep moisture in, it'll keep some of the other weeds at bay, and it'll just eventually break down and form soil. And like I said, last year was the best soil that I've ever had, and I think that was due to the compost or to, due to the straw mulch that I put on the um, plant beds last year. I'm definitely not going to get around to putting up the trellises today, so if that's what you were sticking around for, I apologize, but I will post a video when I put those up this week. I have two more beds to do, 
probably t try to tackle those tomorrow and the day after and then it'll be time to plant. So thanks again for spending time with me today. I hope you have a great week in the garden.